No. As I, as I do, everybody good knows that I always have to wait and check and make sure we're online and we've got uh, audio because we we have made a broadcast without audio. <laughs> so we we make a point of checking. It says we're live and I've and I've got audio and Pastor Ray is behind the the camera. If he would say hi, greet you. Well, welcome to uh, ARC on this Saturday, Apostolic Resurrection Life Training Center. So, uh, Pastor Ralph has a continued teaching on his uh, series this, on leadership, I believe, and uh, different things that he's been teaching on over the last four weeks. So, welcome to all. And we have Canelta and Corpo also in the uh, sanctuary as well. So. There may be other voices that you'll be hearing. Okay, and we've got audio, so we can go. So this will be, <clears throat> this is uh, Saturday, I have this smart watch for a reason. It's Saturday, September the 9th, uh, God is in the ark, and we're going to be continuing with the uh, the whole armor of God part three. Uh, I thought I was going to do it in one session. That was, <laughs> the Holy Spirit had a better idea. So now we're in part three and maybe we'll make it all the way through. Uh, or maybe it'll wind up being four parts, but <clears throat> that's where we're at. So we're in Ephesians chapter six and uh, Verse 10 tells us what we need to do, and that is put on the whole armor of God. Verse 11 tells us why we need to do it, and it <clears throat> because we have to stand against all the wiles. Greek says methodia, the methods, the clever schemes of the enemy. And it's why we need to do it because we have an enemy so that we, that's why we need the full armor and then how do we do it uh, let's look at verse 13 yeah just take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand withstand in the evil day Stand there. Stand there for. And we're, if we get to it today, we'll talk a little bit about how, some more about how we do this. Because if we get down in, well, let's do it now. Um, Just as you go there in verse 13, I'm reading out of the Amplified, uh, Pastor L. <clears throat> and uh, it says, Therefore, put on the complete armor mm. that you may be able to resist and stand your ground. Mm. So whatever ground God has put you in, as far as the ecclesia, as far as whatever city, whatever nation, and you are in, a, in that place of obedience, God is saying, stand your ground. Now, we've seen that in, in Joshua chapter 1, verses uh, probably 5, 7, and 9. Stand and be courageous. Amen. Okay, but Joshua... He had the manifested presence of the of, of the of God about him, but he did not have the Holy Spirit within him. Amen. Hallelujah! We got the Holy Spirit within us. Amen. And we can put the armor of God on. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and uh, and it says, "Stand your ground of 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 the evil day or of danger, and having done all, and what regardless it says the crisis of demands to stand firmly in your place." Amen. So that's the Amplified. So yeah. that's the kind of the kickoff of uh, uh, part three of the armor of God. <laughs> Amen. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we get down to we're going to go there ahead of the notes. Go down to verse eighteen. Uh, well, let me read seventeen because there's a connection here that doesn't show. At least in the King James, it doesn't. Verse seventeen. Uh, we're just going to finish off the armor 
and then tell us how to do it. Take the armor, or take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of the God. And there's a word not translated from the Greek here, dia, D-I-A, it means by or through the means of. So we take all the armor of God by the means of, verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, Amen. watching thereto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So we take on the whole armor of God by praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And prayer in the Spirit, if we get to it today, we're going to look at that as being a big part of that is praying in the mind, the will, uh, and the intentions of God through the Holy Spirit. And very often that's going to be praying in the Spirit, in tongues. Amen. And so praying in the Spirit is praying in the mind, the will, intentions of God, and praying in the uh, gift of praying in tongues. Amen. So, Amen. so if we don't get to the bottom of the notes, you will have not missed that little important, important little Greek word, by or through the means of. Uh, and I have to give credit to a young pastor who pointed out that years ago, that uh, missing word in the translation. So thank you, Pastor Mark. And the beautiful part when it says there uh, in that verse, in verse 18, in the spirit, in all manner of prayer and entreaties to that, to keep alert and what, and for the purpose and the perseverance interceding on behalf of all the saints. So we're not restricted to any uh, space, is right. what I'm saying. Like, um, even though we're here in the sanctuary of Holy Spirit Sands, you know, um, like, for, for example, uh, Pastor Joseph Bonner's on from Liberia, and he's agreeing in the amen. So when we start praying in the Spirit, for those who come together in the Spirit, we may be here in the sanctuary in agreement and praying, but there could be other, like, Pastor Joseph Spirit, pardon me, just, uh, Joseph, praying in the Spirit in Liberia, is joining in with us. Amen. And then Talatala George in Fiji is joining in with us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, other parts of the people around the world or part of Canada, when we come together in the Spirit, we're not restricted to any location other than the cosmos yeah. of what God created Amen. on heaven and on earth. So we're hooked together as one in the Spirit. Hallelujah. So Amen. So we're Amen. together on this. Woo! We're not going to get finished. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Amen. Part four coming up next week. Amen. You betcha. <laughs> Amen. Uh, oh, I was g jumped ahead. Back to verse 13. Okay. Uh, verse 13 says, Where unto you take unto you the whole armor? Uh, No, I, I'm not a scholar. I, but it would it seems that it would be better translation translated take into you the whole armor of God. Not not something you add on on the outside, but something that you build inside. The whole armor of God is in the um uh, well, it starts right up at the beginning in, in righteousness. When you put, uh, to put on the, uh, well, let's just go there. Well, uh, reading out of the new, mess well, the messianic version. Okay. okay. And part of what you're saying is pretty cool because in the messianic version, and I'll, and I'll go to one other translation after this, and it says, for that reason, take unto you. Mm -hmm. When it says to take unto you the whole armor of God, the, fa the 
God the Father that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. So when it take unto you the essence and the DNA of who we are made in his image. Mm. So in other words, uh, we're just not putting on the outside <laughs> right. of what the Father looks like. Amen. We're putting on the full substance of the DNA of Abba Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, and the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKadosh. And it's just not the outside covering, it's the substance of everything that they are that, we, that is within us, Amen. unto us. So, that's, so that's, uh, that's a very awesome point in teaching, Pastor Al, <laughs> that very few people understand. That 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 D, we we were made in the divine nature DNA, the divine nature activated, Amen. but then actualized in the Holy Spirit. It's just not on the outside. Amen. It's also on the inside. Yeah. I think we sing a song like yeah. I think they sing a song like that in Africa, <laughs> in Liberia, about the inside and the outside. Yeah. So we just can't put the outside just on the inside, and we can't put the inside just on the outside. It's all work covered inside and out, right? Amen. You haven't been having a song with that, eh? Yeah. Canal to Corporal. Anyway, so there you go. Yeah. yeah. So you were talking about uh, Joshua yeah. and the uh, having the anointing come upon him mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But uh, Paul tells us, he says, uh, no, you're not. Don't you know? Do you not understand that we have the Holy of Holies in us? Amen. We have the Hey, Shekinah there, of God, is. the very glory of God dwelling in us. We have what they could never have, and they could have Amen. the an external anointing, but we have the benefit of having the Holy Spirit living in yeah. us, dwelling in us. One translation says tabernacling. That's like right. Like the tabernacle of Moses, at the very heart of it is the Holy of Holies, and that's where the Shekinah, the glory of yeah. God, dwells. And that's what Paul's getting to when he says that. Don't you know that the Holy Spirit dwells in you? So they, uh, as we've talked about so many times uh, in all the pieces of armor, uh, now I have to give credit to uh, Pastor Nolan from uh, Tahlequah, um, Oklahoma, for the high-level uh, Greek understanding that uh, he has there. Uh, oh, I'm starting to lose my train of thought. Uh, where was I going? Uh, yeah, the uh, oh, uh, something he calls the... Uh, oh... My goodness, the oh, it has a particular word to describe the uh, uh, Greek structure. What it uh, essentially means that each piece of armor is connected. Well, let's let's go back and look. Um, Okay, the stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. Um, oh, how does that work? The noun is modified. No, that's maybe not the right word. Uh, breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness in this construct means... Uh, that the armor, the breastplate, sorry, the breastplate comes into existence through righteousness. So as you walk in righteousness, you don't put on the armor or the uh, breastplate. It automatically comes on as you walk in righteousness. This is a really unique thing. We try so hard to... Imagine what it's like to put the armor on or feel like we put the armor on. But his point, and uh, it, has, it applies in all the pieces of armor, that when you walk 
in the source. Uh, oh, how does that go? I can't think of it. Uh, something ablative. It, anyway, it's, it means that the source of the breastplate is righteousness. So your breastplate comes into existence when you walk in righteousness. Um, taking unto you the shield of faith. The shield comes into place when you walk in faith. You don't have to imagine that or whatever, but if you're walking in faith, the shield is automatically there. It comes into existence. It owes its source or its existence to your faith, to the faith that you're walking in. Um, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit. The sword comes into your hand, comes into existence as you are filled with the spirit. You can't go out and uh, go after the enemy unless you're filled with the spirit because your sword is totally ineffective. You're, you're dealing with all that you can create and imagine and whatever and uh, it's not enough, simply not enough. So the, uh, uh, I wish I could think of that expression. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It, what it means is that these pieces of the armor come into existence by, uh, we started with righteousness uh, and truth, The, the, the your peace. your your footing yeah the gospel of peace um, the shield of faith the shield comes into existence when you're walking in faith the helmet comes into existence from the moment you're saved you're already covered with the helmet to protect it now we're our our part is to renew our minds with the word of God and with the truth. Uh, so we, we contribute to uh, how well that's working by our behavior, by our uh, uh, renewing our minds, renewing noose, the way we think, our whole style of thinking, changed by the uh, truth, by getting into it and staying in it and changing the way we think rather than let the be conformed to the image of this world be conformed to the image of God mm -hmm. to be conformed to the mind of Christ so we think and act and behave as he would in any situation well that makes so much sense uh, Pastor Ralph you know you know having you know Canal to Sackler here, and and uh, it, it's so awesome to have her from Liberia, and, and her children haven't arrived yet, and and we have uh, Corporal S Sally here, but you know, in a lot of the teachings, you know, that we've taught in the past, this brings clarity of the understanding of that I cannot put the armor on you, yeah, I can't put the armor on somebody else because each and every one of these pieces of the armor. Are a personal, um, are a personal thing of righteousness that each individual has to take upon themselves. From as far as salvation, the sal nobody can. Uh, you, it's up to you to, to, to make that decision of salvation. Amen. Faith. It's about your faith, Amen. not somebody else's faith. And it's about peace. It's your peace. You know. So when you look at all this, this is why. In the teaching, a lot of people in the past have said, you can't put the armor of God on somebody else because they have to have that personal relationship and they have to be walking in, in righteousness and they have to have the salvation of God in them and they have to have faith. And if, and if you don't have faith, you can't please God. And if you can't please God and, and you don't have faith, how can you put the armor on? Yeah, because the armor owes its existence to the faith. It owes its existence to your righteousness. So, so when you speak it in faith, it becomes. 
Yes. When you walk in righteousness, it is. Amen. Aye, yes. Amen. Wow. Uh, Mike Blair just uh, watching this uh, from probably Brandon or maybe Total Freedom in Sydney. You know, they, they have Glory to Glory Ministries here in, in Manitoba, Canada, across Canada, but also Manitoba. But uh, he's watching. And so bless you, Mike. Nice to see you on there. Amen. Bless you, Mike. Thank you for joining. Okay. Um, so let's try to... Well, that's a, a quarter of a page <laughs> in my notes with a whole lot more added. Last week, uh, uh, we were really emphasizing the loin belt of truth. When you, we put on the loin belt of truth by believing, living, and acting on the truth. And the, what is the truth? Well, there are true two excuse me, two principal truths. Um, and they are, number one, Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the truth. So with our loin belt of truth, <clears throat> the first thing we have to believe is that he is the Son of God. He is the Savior of the world. He did lay down his life in exchange for ours. He took upon us all of his sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So <clears throat> the first thing, the first truth, our principle is that Jesus is the truth. And the second one, um, these all come from John, uh, John 14, 6 and John 17, 17. The word, the logos of God is the truth. So the written word of God is the truth. As we walk in what the word says we could do, should do, ought to be doing, then the loin belt comes into existence. And on to the loin belt are attached all the other pieces of the armor. The breastplate of righteousness connects front and back to the loin belt of truth. The uh, scabbard for your sword of the spirit hangs on that belt of truth. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> There's a place on the belt to clip your, your shield on. The big battle shield is heavy, and if you had to carry the weight of it all day long, you soon wouldn't would be so tired you couldn't fight. <clears throat> So the, because the breastplate connects to the loin belt, it acts like shoulder straps to hold the belt up. And when the weight of the shield is clipped to the belt, the weight is distributed from the belt across the shoulders. So you can walk on and fight all day uh, and not uh, be so tired you can't hold the shield up. So. <laughs> Every piece of armor is tied back to the loin belt of truth, the truth that Jesus is the Son of God, Savior of the world, the truth that the Word, the Logos of God, the written Word of God is truth. And as we walk in those things, the loin belt is in place, and we have a place then to anchor all the other weapons, the shield, the, everything is connected to that loin belt of truth. So there's just no substitute for knowing Jesus, having personal relationship with him, knowing that you're born again and saved, and that this book is the truth, and that you need to walk in all that it has for you. Now, uh, we are blessed in the new covenant that the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us, enabling us to know and understand, experience, and then activate us to be able to live out all that we know of the truth in the, our, in the life around us. So 
the loin belt is such a point, an important point in the connection of our armor. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, I said all of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is the caution. Uh, if you begin to abandon the truth, to water it down, to walk, you know, start to take on the world attitudes, the world's thinking, the world's whatever, and water down the loin belt of truth, then the anchor for all your other pieces of armor start to fall away. And uh, you're totally vulnerable to the enemy. If you get away from the truth of the word of God, then you become vulnerable. Uh, your armor is no longer in place and you need to get back to a place of faith in the word and obeying it and living it and get away from all the worldly wisdom because it's shooting holes in your armor, and you know if there's any holes in your armor, the uh, enemy is going to find, find a hole, a weakness, and he's going to attack you at that point. So, uh, excuse me. Oh, tickle me nose. So, you know, having, you know, the, the, the belt of truth, which has the shoulder straps to hold up all those things, and the breastplate of uh, righteousness would be attached to that front, yeah. front and back all hooked in but also the the loin uh the belt of truth would uh, also there there there's a loin protection that goes below the belt of truth yep. to protect because there's there's arteries that run on either side of the leg uh going down and if you strike those the person can bleed out pretty quick mm -hmm. so there's a leather protection that goes down there and also uh, a leather protection over the vitals yes that would be there as well so it, the belt of truth is hooked. It, everything is being stabilized by the belt of truth. Yeah, and the uh, <clears throat> you don't notice it or see it, but the uh, the leather strips that are joined together, which hang almost to your knees, <clears throat> are backed in the most important place with uh, a, a piece of metal, so that. You, your ability, this is uh, kind of a hidden truth, but your ability to reproduce faith in others Amen. comes from your connection to the truth, the line belt of truth. Yeah. So, you know, Tiffany uh, Butler just came on, you know, and uh, she's just saying, hi, Pastor Ralph, and she's watching uh, probably from maybe Sirius or Brandon. But in that, um, you know, I bet you women would wear these, uh, the, this armor. Women would have to put on the same armor as oh, men. Absolutely. And because the same vitals have to be protected. Yes. Because it's the arteries that run down the legs in certain areas that if you understand where the enemy can strike you to bleed you out, that, whether you're a woman or a man, those things have to be protected. Amen. Absolutely. And... Uh, as for Tiffany, you know, she's she's leading up. Uh, she needs to be protected and put in the armor of God on her because the enemy would want to attack in every direction because she's in, in a position in leading, uh, you know, a teen challenge, uh, the women's teen challenge in Brandon. So the Lord bless her and protect her as she's in high spiritual warfare all the time, all, over all the time for all those young ladies that are going through the recovery process. So we Amen. thank you, Tiffany, for what you do. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tiffany, and thank you for joining us, and, and hi, Tiffany. <laughs> Sounds like it should mean something more like, you know, like a high five, a hi, <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> hi, praise the Lord, Tiffany. Yeah. Amen. Worshiper. Oh, yeah. Oh, here, I've got it in my notes. <clears throat> We're talking about the breastplate of righteousness. In Greek, righteousness is the ablative of source case. That was the thing I was looking for. 
What that means is the breastplate owes its source to righteousness. Or put it on another way, the breastplate owes its existence to righteousness. If you walk in righteousness, the breastplate automatically comes into existence. So if you're walking in righteousness, you are automatically protecting your heart from all the attacks of the enemy. It's automatically in place, the righteousness. Mm. Uh, and of course, the, the corollary to that is that if you're not walking in righteousness in any area of your life, then your breastplate is weak in that area or full of holes that the enemy will exploit. So if there are some places in the word that are too hard for you to handle and you watered them down or made justified your attitudes or watered down to the uh, well the very low standards of this world uh, then know that there are holes in your armor and the enemy is going to take advantage of them you just know that it just uh, you just holes in your armor this is why back to being the fullness of God the f <laughs> which is being full of the agape mm -hmm. the, the, the unselfish giving kind of love of God the agape of God and uh, in Ephesians 3 I think it starts around verse 14 uh, Paul's praying that we would be filled with all the knowledge and the fullness of the love of God and that would be in us the fullness of God the fullness of God is his love it is his character and we can know and experience in that as we allow the Holy Spirit to take over our minds and our thoughts and gives us a new mind and new thoughts, a new way of living. Oh. Wow. Praise the Lord. Oh. Okay. It is a I can't get away from doing this. I think every, every session I wind up having a a little caution for the leaders because many of the people who watch this these teachings are leaders in the resurrection life so all of that means that if you are a leader who is walking in any sin then your witness will allow your followers to have hidden sin in your lives if you have a pastor leading a group who's addicted to pornography you got to know that there's a whole lot of sexual sin going to show up in his congregation. It's just a principle uh, that where there's that kind of armor, hole in the armor of a leader, the enemy's going to take advantage of it. If the your leader is uh, compromised, comprom there's a there's a great word, compromised with the thinking of this world and not sticking to the word and the spirit then uh, there's going to be a whole lot going on in this congregation that shouldn't be there well if certain uh, unfamiliar spirits or certain spirits attract other spirits and they come together and all of a sudden you've, you've got too much <coughs> of those things running around that are going to cause confusion in, in and take away the peace that should be in that particular uh, church or congregation or ministry. Amen. Exactly. Yeah. It. Uh, so accountability is very important. Yes. And I, I know that you're very strong on that particular subject of keeping the, the leadership and the, the altar, uh, holy, that we can't allow sin to be active in our lives and expect God's blessing. It's just not going to be there. I mean, in our own lives, if we allow things to take over the, the center of our, our thoughts and whatever, um, 
the Holy Spirit never leaves because he promised he wouldn't. But his presence and the, your awareness of his presence fades away until he's not there anointing your life and anointing your thoughts and your behavior and you're drifting. You're drifting. And I can't imagine a scarier place than that to be um, in a place where the anointing and the presence of the Holy Spirit are not active in your life. That's a, just a scary place. Uh, well, it's really, it's God's definition of death and hell. Um, when you're not saved, you are isolated from his presence and from his blessing. And that's that's the really the definition of hell, is that you are permanently isolated from the presence of the Holy Spirit, isolated from the presence of God the Father. You're stuck forever in all of your guilt and shame and being attacked by the enemy because you uh, had no relationship with Jesus. Just, I can't imagine a worse place. And that's one of the teachings that we do here at Resurrection Life uh, around the world that we've taught. And, uh, you know, the, the scripture, John 3.16, everybody's familiar with it. And uh, in, in that scripture, uh, John 3.16, if one of the ladies want to get that, maybe read it. Uh, over here, that would be great. But 316 talks about uh, everlasting life. And that word in the Greek is apathanesco. So you either have everlasting life or you have eternal damnation. Amen. Uh, there's, there's nothing on the fence there. Yeah. It's either, either everlasting life in heaven in the relationship with the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Bride of Christ or everlasting damnation for all those souls that refuse to have Jesus Christ as their personal savior. It's either one or the other. You got, you, just come on up here, can I help it? Or whatever you feel comfortable. Yeah, and uh, the mic's here, it'll, it'll pick it up. So this is, yeah, it'll, you can just speak, read it from there. And yeah. on, what I'm gonna do, can I, do you wanna go on? No, it's okay. Okay, all right. Um. John 3, 16, and it reads, It says, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his only begotten Son, so that wo everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Just yeah. read the next two verses. Yeah, and that word everlasting, everlasting life is apathanesco. So it's your choice, everlasting. God sent his Son, that is something, God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Amen. 18. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God, one and only son. Amen. 19. Yes. And the judgment is based on this fight. God's light came into the world, but people love people love the people love the darkness Amen. more than the light. For for their action were evil. Twenty. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. Mm. 21. But those who do not sorry but those who do what is right come to the light Amen. so others can see that they are doing what God wants. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Thank so you Pastor uh, Canelta. <laughs> yeah. You know uh, right now we have uh, Pastor Stanley, maybe you can help me here. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Uh, uh, Pastor Stanley, his yeah. last name, how do you? Magoda. Magoda. Now, he has just joined us from 
uh, Uganda and as wanting to be part of Resurrection Life Ministries and and uh, the church that he has founded can, can you, his church is called for not at wait was it church yeah, yeah. Christ Save Ministries yeah but Christ this one Save. I can't, but he's the pastor Christ, of Open Christ Life. Christ Save Ministry. Yeah, For not at Christ Save Ministry. I, I don't know this name of this. Uh, uh, the leader? No, the, how do you say this, where he lives? I don't, how do you say that oh, city? Yes. Mubigi. Uh, Mubigi, oh. Uganda. Uh, Amen. Okay. I, I don't think I would have given it justice, Stanley, but. Mubigi, Uganda. Uganda. Yes. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Kenneth. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. It's amazing the, the countries that show up here. Uh, He's saying glory to God. Yeah, amen. Glory. And how you, you spell that name is M P I G I, Uganda. So I, you can put the accent on the wrong syllable, it's not going to sound. How do you say it again? That's <laughs> it. Uh, uh, I know I, I don't want to attempt it yet. Uganda, yes, I got that. And I got Pastor yeah, yeah. Stanley. I got that. Uh, it's Mumbiki, yeah. Uganda. Okay. Yeah. Where? Yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. Okay, That's I it. live in Mumbiki, And his, his last name is? Mugoda. M-U-G. Mugoda. I got the Mugoda. God in the center of the Mu and the A. M Mugoda. Stanley Mugoda. Mugoda. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We have people to help. Amen. And we got we and we have uh, we have the nations with resurrection life around the world, and Uganda is one of them. And we have some, and we actually have people from Uganda that are part of the church now, and uh, that's kind of awesome. But uh, we have an international conference. I'll just put we have an international conference happening here, uh, September 28th to October 10th. And uh, so the Lord bless you, all those who are going to attend. And um, we can go online. At our website, uh, www.resurrectionlife.bc.ca, and you can register for it. So, and some people, if you have any other questions, just just uh, message us on Messenger. Okay. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Pastor Kanata. <laughs> yeah. And Corpo is watching as well. Hey, Corpo. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Liberia. <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of. <clears throat> uh, I, I just kind of marvel, you know, God gives you a prophetic word about ministering to the nations, mm. and Ralph <laughs> doesn't look like he'd have a whole lot of hope in ministering to the nations, uh, and yet we get up, I don't know how many total nations that we 83 that 80, we know of. Oh, 80, okay, 83, 83 that we know of. That we know of, yeah, are participating in these teachings, both the Sunday services and the uh, art teaching. Uh, yeah, that we know Prophetic of. word filled, and, and I, I don't even have to leave home. <laughs> and, you know, what really excited me uh, is that there are people from China Mm -hmm. trying to register to come <laughs> to our conference. Mm. So obviously they're getting it in China. Right? Yes. Wow. I didn't know that, but there, uh, we don't know where... When the signal gets sent out, we don't know where it's going because the signal is in the airways. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is in charge of it. The devil want to block it, but the Holy Spirit's going to get it to where it needs to go. And... Uh, uh, even when you made the trip down to, like five years ago to uh, Fiji, you know, uh, you know, tell a tell a George, uh, he, he's on quite a bit, and uh, and Donovan from Barbados, our, my our spiritual son from Barbados, went to Fiji as well, and and we had a marvelous youth conferences and people saved and moved the spirit, and you were right in the middle of it, <laughs> young Ralph in a youth conference. <laughs> In his Fiji outfit, uh, it's a it's a Fiji outfit is like a, a skirt that would be or you would you see in Scotland like the Scottish yeah. guys would be wearing, but it's just normal dress in Fiji, and there was 
young Pastor Ralph. I got pictures of it yeah. with him and Donovan and dressed up as Fijians mm -hmm. and uh, ministering at a youth conference and God's moving in big time. So yeah. God was no respecter of ages or persons or what nationalities or nations and were a part of that. We got one picture that I absolutely loved and that's uh, Pastor Donovan, myself, and Pastor Ben, and uh, uh, Donovan and myself yeah. are wearing sandals. Pastor Ben is like so many other of the Fijians in the crowd. He's barefoot. Yeah. He, he's, he's in his Sunday best and barefoot. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. I, I, lo I go back and look at that picture quite often. Yeah. What a time we had there. Yeah. What, and what a time the Holy Spirit had there, oh. touching so many lives. It was an awesome outpouring of the Spirit five years ago, and, and it's still rolling. And it doesn't matter. If, if, you, if you look at, at a footprint in the sands, you know, that, that, that parable or that poem that was written, The Footprints in the Sands, wherever Jesus walked on this earth, do you think his footprints were erased? No. Do you think his present was er presence was ever erased? Whenever the Father uh, of Heaven speaks, do you think His voice ever ceases? No. It goes for eternity. Wherever the Holy Spirit is moving, it continues to move Amen. and hover there. Yeah. Who's going to enter in? Yeah. So this is His omnipresence is always present. Yeah. Past, present, and future. I am the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. When you look at that scripture. When we come and we minister in his name, of all the nations I've been to and different people have been to, those words that were spoken to advance the kingdom of God and to glorify the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, continues to hover Amen. by the Holy Spirit in those nations. Yeah. You know, I could think of a very uh, practical example uh, in Fiji, and that is when we were at that... Uh, beach called First Landing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of the uh, circumcised black Jews came from Africa to Fiji, landed there. To this day, Fijian and the Fijian churches are all highly respective of Israel and pray for Israel. That, that, that initial introduction to Jesus the Messiah as a Jew has so affected all the churches in Fiji. To this day, it's affecting them. Yes, in 2008, I brought a certain teaching uh, to Fiji. And, uh, you know, in, in the teaching that I brought that of what God had given me out of the Word, um, you know, it, it, there was a... a uh, well, Apostle Johnny Kata, but he's also got three university degrees and masters, and he was the superintendent of uh, the AOG. Uh, he was the head of the school system in uh, in Fiji and, and other areas, a very well-respected individual. But um, because of some of the things I was studying in Africa, I was able to, uh, because on the Fijian flag, it showed two warriors in a canoe uh, at that very same place where they landed. Yeah. They happened to be warriors from Uganda. Mm. Oh, They were from Mombasa mm. because we were able to tra it, trace it back because those uh, African warriors that and landed in that particular place that you were talking about ended, came from there, but they were circumcised. Mm -hmm. And not only circumcised, but they had pottery that was from the area of Mombasa, Kenya, right. Uganda, that area. Right. And uh, so uh, Apostle Johnny Kata, or this called Statesman, he was able to go back and connect all the dots because they were trying to connect the dots. Mm -hmm. And they connected the dots that <laughs> uh, their ancestors came from that area. Amen. And that was the area that um, I, you know, was the lost tribe of Israel uh, came out of, and I, I, uh, I, I got a whole teaching on that. Yeah. But uh, 
but in that, uh, it was so exciting to see how Africa, you know, it's you know how Africa had such a um, impact on a nation in Fiji who were cannibals at that time. Yeah, they came to Fiji who were warlike uh, in tribes, but they were all cannibals. Yeah, and those that came from Africa weren't. So there was obviously wars and that type of thing, but things changed over the years, and. Um, yeah, and in gospel, that changing, the gospel changed. The gospel changed those in Africa, but they but they came as the seed of Abraham. Amen. So there are there has about four years ago, five years ago, uh, yes, uh, uh, two uh, one year after we were there, uh, Israel came to uh, Fiji and pronounced and did their traces in saying that. They had the same bloodline of the Abraham, as far as the children of Israel. Amen. And they claimed Israel as their own. Amen. One year after we were there, and that's part of a study that I've had for about oh golly, 20 years, 25 years, and I was able to crack the code, and mm -hmm. Holy Spirit allowed me to do that. And uh, anyway, so that's an exciting thing. You put on the armor of God, and. But you also, God put you in different places. Uh, when I was in Zimbabwe in 2014, uh, I was with uh, Bishop Onisiyama Goranga. He, he uh, brought me in and we, and we had a conference there. And Bishop John from uh, Kenya, Omande, uh, and, and Bishop Patrick Matwari came down. And what happened was I was explaining to the people in Zimbabwe about the lost tribe of Israel, and I, and I believe that they were in this area. And they said, we know exactly where they are. We know exactly where they are. Mm. And uh, the Nemba tribe. Mm. And the Nemba tribe, they went out and, and found the chief of the Nemba tribe who were part of... Uh, who built the, the, the temp temples of Solomon's Temple oh. uh, out of Ethiopia. But they are, even to this day, they are the architects that built the major cities all through uh, South Africa and that type of thing. Wow. But from the Nemba tribe. And so the chief or the head person of the Nemba tribe came and met me. And I explained the whole thing of how, this, how they were connected. Hell. And we wept together, we cried together, and they, and they said, we don't fit anywhere, and everybody's trying to kill us, and now we understand, because we're not Jewish, we're Messianic. Amen. And, and the Christian churches didn't understand them, the Jewish people didn't understand them, uh, the Jewish synagogues didn't understand them, but now we understand. So what, so what happened after uh, I had been there, um, the... Israel went down and tested them mm. to see how Jewish they were. Right. And if you've got about 14% to 18% DNA of Jewish heritage in your blood, you can get a passport to go to Israel. Amen. Theirs was 80% plus. Yeah, I heard that. 80% plus <laughs> of, of the tribes of Israel. So exciting. And I remember getting... Uh, uh, further situation, they were going to fly them all back to Israel, and they came came with money to give them. Uh, and and the, <laughs> the chief and everybody says, "We can't take your money. Go give it to the synagogue guy down the road because we we follow Yeshua Hamashiach, Amen. and we we are blessed of the Father, Adonai Elohim, and we love the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Hakodesh, and." Uh, isn't it awesome how things connect, all things connect, even the armor of God all comes together. Amen. But God has got dots connecting Africa to Fiji, from Fiji to all the, the 21 nations that are in, in the southern hemisphere there. Amen. And they're all connected, but they all are part of the sons of Abraham. Amen. 
because of DNA. Yep. And because some of, of us get to be adopted, grafted into the olive tree. All of us. Yeah. Amen. So it, it's amazing. Amen. That's a bit of a rabbit trail, I know. But, yeah. Oh. But it's it's just amazing how God brings things together. And here, here Stanley from the area close to Mombasa out of Uganda, uh, but in Kenya. And I, it, I, I, it just, I, I, because they said the pottery was from Kenya and Uganda area because they didn't have borders back then. It was that tribe. Yeah. And that particular tribe was of the tribe of the uh, Midianites, hmm. which was of uh, uh, Abraham's third wife, um, had seven sons, and the fifth son was Midian. Mm. And that from the Midianites that went down to conquer two thirds of Africa. Right. Hey. And but they also brought, uh, they were circumcised, and that's they were the same ones, the same Midianites that uh, when Moses went across the desert, and he met the priest of Midian, mm. the Midianites, the blood rite. Amen. The blood rite of the sons of, of Abraham. And so when Abraham married his third wife, Korah, she was a black woman. And it was meant to be. Amen. Meant to be. Amen. Hallelujah. It's just interesting uh, how... A little seed, a li one, one person got digging into it, and it opened up a whole lot of stuff. It, it just interesting. And the same thing with the word. Mm -hmm. You start digging into it, and it opens up so many uh, attitudes, so many behaviors. It be opens up all kinds of revelation of the word of the, uh, the character of people and the character of God and how all of that ties together. And for us, uh, it becomes a part of our belt of truth. George Ross is watching Teletella. Oh, Teletella, George. Mm -hmm. Welcome mm -hmm. to the broadcast. From Fiji. Yeah. Wow. It's just, oh, and it, he has uh, his son, Joel. Uh, Joel. Joel? Joel. Joseph, I thought, but maybe Joel. Uh, yeah, Joel. Joel. Yeah. Yes, well, we're so delighted to watching all the pictures of your... Uh, uh, reunion. Reunion, that's the word I'm looking for, reunion. Yes. <laughs> what a... What a blessing. He's saying Bula Tala Tala Ralph. <laughs> uh, Bula okay. Veneka. Bula Veneka. Yeah, yeah I, I still wear my Bula shirt. <laughs> in fact, I, I have to get in the practice. I used to wear it quite regularly for these broadcasts, and then I kind of got out of the habit of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what a trip. Well, I don't know. You know what, we've got so far off, I think maybe we'll, we'll close early today and uh, we'll get back into the, the, the teaching next week. Cause we've gone off on a, a wonderful little rabbit trail of history, but history of the works and the moving of the Holy Spirit, how he moved on people. Like, why if you're on the east coast of Africa, would you go sailing across the, the, the ocean, into, out into the Pacific Ocean to find another country? Obviously. Another hemisphere. Another, yeah, literally. So the, uh, you know, just amazing how the Lord, before we had all these tools, uh, of, of broadcasting how he managed to get the word to virtually every place in the world 
because they would have had to have gone through the Straits of Magellan at the southern part of uh, South America and come up through that way into the Cook Islands and, and yeah. So it's amazing how the Lord, with the wind and the currents and whatever it may be, he will spread his gospel. Amen. He will spread his gospel to every part of the world. To yeah. Every part. Yeah. That's why he is called the Ruach HaKodesh, the wind, the breath of God. He blows, he blows everywhere. Yeah. Amen. He Amen. makes himself known. Wow. No, I, <laughs> unless you've got somewhere else to go, I think we'll, we'll cut, cut this one short and we'll get back to the, uh, the uh, 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 ladies have a song or, or, or if you do, we'll do that. And, um, you know, you know, the apostolic resurrection life center, as far as training and equipping and discipleship and, and sharing the word, but also history and connecting all the dots of of uh, the early church for the first 300 years of the early church and how the early church went whatever the known world was at that time uh, the church spread out of uh, out of uh, Jerusalem and it went to to every part when you read it in Acts chapter 1 verses 4 to 8 it just the, the word of God was spread but the reason it was spread was because of persecution yeah and so we're in a days now that persecution is going to be something that we need to know how to handle and how to stand. So the series that Pastor Ralph is, or Rabboni Ralph, which is teaching in the spirit, is important for the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, to know that persecution is only going to advance the kingdom of God. So we need to know about the armor of God. We need to know about the sword of the spirit. We need to know how to apply these things as heaven's tools upon us and not to, not to be in fear, but to stand and be courageous. Amen. And, and also to be in that place of awe and worship, you know, silent wonder uh, in worship uh, an energized awe of God uh, is so important that we know who we are. And in the first 300 years of the church, the early church was called the way. There was, there was no denominations. It was just a messianic direction called the way in the symbol of a fish. And we need to understand that uh, today um, is, is going to be very similar what we're going to be going into over maybe the next years to come. Uh, we're close to going into Rosh Hashanah on September the 28th, which is an, another new year for the Hebraic calendar from heaven, 5,784. And you might say, well, what does that mean? I, I only know the Gregorian calendar. Well, the Gregorian calendar out of Rome was only, that came out of Constantine. That came out of uh, false gods. That came about, a, out about his godly, ungodly, uh, kingdom, the sun god, and Mars, and and all those. Anyway, you can research it. But when Constantine became the first, uh, well, let's just call him, he he wanted to control the church. And uh, why don't you just reverse the camera so that folks uh, online well, can see? Well, they know what I look like. Yeah. Uh, but okay, so they wanted to. They wanted to. Uh, Constantine wanted to control the church. And, and I want you to know most governments do. Yeah. Most governments want to control you. I'm just going to move this, my head out of the, let declare his glory is better. Yeah. Um, the only government that we need to be in line with is the government of heaven. Amen. And those who are, are put in the gates of every city, of every nation, of every hamlet, are the ecclesia of the fivefold ministry that God has placed on this earth. And it was the apostolic order back then in the first 300 years. You know, the, the, the apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the evangelist, the pastor that worked together. And uh, you might say, well, I, I, I'm not understanding the apostolic order. 
Well, you can read about that in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Jesus talked about it, and there's another couple other places. But what I'm saying is what, what, what it was in the first 300 years, you can expect in the next years to come. Amen. We, are have, we are going to be in a place that we have to understand who we are in Christ Jesus during persecution and trials and things that are difficult for us. Amen. Financially, spiritually, naturally, food, environment, government, whatever it may be. We need to keep our eyes looking up and we need to walk in who we are as sons and daughters of the Most High. In saying that, Constantine said, after 300 years basically, I will stop persecuting you. I will stop persecuting you if you close down your church and get into my church, yep. my ways of government. Because he was like emperor and the pope all at once. <clears throat> I don't know if you want a potentate running your life. <clears throat> I only want the presence of God and the Holy Spirit within me. And the commandments of the kingdom of heaven coming through the Holy Spirit and directing us. Yes, we are responsible to vote in in Canada or in other nations to vote, to vote in our uh, all levels of government. Who we vote in is who we get. So vote those who are righteous. Amen. Vote those who are in a place of integrity. Vote those who have unconditional love. Vote those who can walk in unconditional forgiveness. Vote those have, who have an acceptance that's above the norm in humanity today. And vote those who walk in covenant relationship with Adonai Elohim. Amen. Yeshua HaMashiach, the Ruach HaKadosh, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You might say, that's too much to handle, Ray. <laughs> Some people call me a whole bunch of different names. The only thing I want to be heard, and the only thing I want to hear from my Father in Heaven or Jesus sitting on the right hand of my Father in Heaven is well done, good, and faithful servant. Amen. So when I walk and put on the armor of God, I am walking in righteousness and not affected by this world. Because when I put on the preparation of the gospel of peace, I only have heaven's shoes on. Mm -hmm. The peace of heaven. The Jehovah Shalom that allows me to walk in the terra firma of maybe great difficulties on this earth and not be affected by it. And when I put up the shield of faith, my faith and who I believe in Jesus Christ, he's the one that extinguishes all the darts and arrows and spears and of the evil one that wants to take me out. And when I put on the helmet of salvation, I know who I am mm -hmm. and the I am that is who is in me. I know who I am. And then that's why I can't put it on you. You have to know who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. And that breastplate of righteousness, which is extension of the righteousness of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, can only be put on if you accept him as your salvation and your Christ the anointed one. Amen. And when you put on the, the belt of truth, there is no hypocrisy. The Father in heaven cannot lie. Jesus does not lie. If you're lying, it's a lying spirit that's taken a part of you, you need to repent. Because that's not of the kingdom of heaven. It's only of the kingdom of this world. So if that's you, repent. Because you're going to be going eyeball to eyeball to Jesus one day and he's going to ask you about it. 
I forgive any of those who do things like that against us at this ministry. But you're still going to be accountable for it, eyeball to eyeball to Jesus. And when you put on the preparation of the gospel of peace, that means you preach the gospel of peace wherever the adversity is. Our young man in uh, Bilia, up in uh, Bangladesh, well, there was a threat of killing him up there. We've been praying for him, protecting him. I've been, I've been doing personal prayer, face to face with him on, fa with, uh, you know, with, and uh, in protection. I, I, he was, he was, he was scared, and I was able to pray, and others were praying, and I was able to, in, to, 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 to encourage him not to be in the fear of man, but only in the, in the awe of God. So that's where you need to be. And that silent wonder, that energized awe, that resurrection life, that that amazing thing that we walk together in arm in arm with in the body of Christ. We do not want to be connected with unholy alliances like what happened 300 years ago with Constantine. It will only bring a dilution. It will dilute the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It'll, it'll, it'll cause people to lose vision and direction by the Holy Spirit because they'll become blinded. And their ears will be plugged up because they won't hear from God. They're only listening to the lies of this world. And that's the truth. So the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you until next Saturday at Ark. I'll come back and uh, continue his fourth <laughs> session on the armor of God. And it's good that we came together. You ladies got anything? Are you good? Um, you know, uh, coming together and teaching is discipleship and training disciples, and that's what this is all about. <sighs> so that the blood of Jesus does not become diluted. Amen. And spiritual AIDS comes in. And then when that happens, it brings death, but it also brings a place where the church falls asleep. If that's you, repent. And come awake in the blood of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit, and the word of the breath of the Uruk, of the Holy Spirit speaking through heaven and the Father. So, Lord, bless you. Amen. Amen. So, you guys got something or? No? Uh, we. What? May the Lord bless you. <laughs> That's it? Bless you, everyone. Bless you. And we love you. We pray to see you next week, Saturday. Mm -hmm. Bye. Yeah, good night.